Hey everyone, welcome back to our video series on Amazon Data Analytics Speciality. I hope you are doing well and staying safe out there. Today we're going to talk about Amazon RDS, which is short form of Relational Database Service. All right, let's get started right away. Amazon RDS is a fully managed service provided by AWS. It allows us to easily set up operate and scale a relational database in the cloud. RDS support a wide range of popular database engines like MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, and Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a proprietary of AWS relational database engine and which is compatible with MySQL and Postgres. So Amazon uh, RDS offer several benefits pretty much like all other services in cloud, uh, like an automatic backup, high availability and durability, scalability, securities, that's what we see in other services of clouds or Amazon AWS too. As we all know, there are like various methods to implement a database, such as like installing everything on your on-prem servers within your organization or installing, or there is other way is to, we can install the database on EC2 instance. Uh, however, RDS elements the need to perform the administrative tasks such as patching, backup, recovery, etc., which allow us to focus on application tasks such as schema design, query constraints, uh, sorry, query constructions and optimizations. As you can look on the screen, like if uh, we install an, uh, a database in our, like on, on our server within our data centers, like there are various activities which as a user we need to perform like we need to take care of uh, like application optimization scaling availability backups patching software installations any updates like a os related uh, patch ups and installations maintenance rack sack power networking like everything is need to be maintained by us and the other option which i was mentioning is ec2 but um, that remove some uh, some some of like a like a IT overhead but not all of them you can look at this like it removes only like OS related IT overhead but anything related to database we still need to we need to do it by ourselves as we can see the backups patching installations create scaling and all these need to be done by users but if we use Amazon RDS you can see that Everything is taken care of by AWS. The only piece where we have to focus and which I was mentioning, this allow us to focus only on application tasks such as like schema design, query construction, optimization of your work and all those things. So that make, uh, so now we understand like if, if we have to use an, uh, like a relational database in Amazon, or in, in a, like even in cloud, like we go for a fully managed service, so we don't have to worry about all these things. Now look into the RDS concepts and terminologies. So we'll start with the database instance. Database instance, basically they are the building blocks of RDS. It is an isolated uh, database environment in the cloud, which contain multiple user created databases. In other words, we can say it's a virtual server that runs specific database engine with different network specification, storage, and uh, security and security settings, etc. Uh, the next uh, thing we need to view is database engine. So basically, what type of database you want to run. And one more thing I want to make it clear here, like RDS is not a database. RDS is a service which we use to run our database. So that's why we have to pick a database engine. Uh, the next thing is the database instance class, which uh, basically means that refers to the size of the database instance. That refers to the size of the server on of the RDS database instance, which simply means the compute memory capacity of the database instance. And these are the database type engines, which we already mentioned, like the they are the only database instance currently available in RDS. So MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQL Server, Oracle, and Amazon Aurora, which is uh, I, which is mentioned like it's a proprietary AWS relational database engine, 
and that is compatible only with MySQL and Postgre. Uh, the next thing is the multi-AG. So multi-AG stands for multiple uh, availability zone, which allow us to automatically replicate the primary database to standby database in different uh, in like in different AZ within the same reason. And the standby database is kept in sync with the primary database through synchronous replication and that improves the availability and durability of the database basically multi ag is used for like disaster recovery kind of situations where if one or our primary uh, like database goes down we still have a secondary database and as we can see in this picture like uh, we have two databases one is called master other like read replica so it's not uh, it's not prime secondary host, but imagine instead of read replica, we have a, a, like one primary host, the master will be the primary host, and this will be a secondary host. Read replica is something which is different than secondary host, but uh, like it is pretty similar. Like you will have a, like a standby database in a different availability zone of the same reason. As you can say, we have one reason, in that reason we have two availability zones, in one we have our master data sets and the second one is read replica. But imagine if it's like instead of master, this is the primary and the master and primary are same, but instead of read replica, this is a secondary host. Secondary host is basically, like primary host and secondary host are very intuitive. Primary host means it's our main database, while secondary host is basically our standby uh, database. And this is very, like it is uh, used in like failover or disaster recovery kind of situations and now the read replica the, the big questions coming into mind like how read replica is different than uh, secondary and what's its use case so read replica is a read only copy of the primary database that is created in the different uh, availability zone of the same reason so pretty same like secondary but the purpose of read replica is to improve the read uh, like scalability and performance by like it, it improved the scalability and performance by offloading the request uh, like instead of hitting the primary database they goes some of them goes from here and how it is different like it can't be used for the failover or recovery purposes and the other thing is also like when we are uh, like the difference between primary and read replica is one is the use case the secondary is used for failover and recovery while uh, read replica is not used for that and the second difference is like uh, the secondary host is synchronously synced with primary with like with the difference of millisecond while with read replica that's not the case in read replica we will have a synchronous copies and uh, then you might be worrying like okay if we do if somebody is reading from read replica they might not have uh, the correct data or the complete data so that's possible and there are ways to like like identify those kind of things but uh, that's the main, main difference like the usage like why we have read replica and like what's the purpose of read replica and secondary host and the second thing is uh, like how the data is copied in secondary host or standby host it is copied uh, synchronously while in read replica it is copied asynchronously and there is another thing which uh, uh, there is a, a, another thing which uh, uh, we need to keep in mind is VPC like in this picture you must be seeing a VPC here uh, so we need to keep in mind it basically VPC, a VPC is a, like a virtual private cloud it allow us to launch RDS in a like in a like a logically isolated section of AWS cloud when we create RDS in in a VPC, we can define the network settings such as IP address range, security groups uh, that are specific to uh, like your organization needs, those kind of things. But in this video, we will not be discussing v VPC as it is not directly related to data analytics, but, uh, in but is instead considered to be more a network topic. So it's more like a network thing, but uh, it's good to know like whenever we creating RDS or even with the case of EC, EC2, we need to define these virtual private cloud. This is basically a logical uh, uh, cloud which isolate you from the other uh, 
uh, from like which isolate you in the AWS cloud and this is like kind of security around your RDS and that in, like allow who can access and then control the access like who can access your database and all those things okay now let's jump to the demo really quickly we jump to the demo okay awesome so the first thing we need to do is we need to sign into our AWS account second is like launch the RDS service so you can like uh, I have already used it so that's why it's in my frequent use but if you're not you can search in like in the search bar type RDS and you will be able to find it okay once this is loading it it's taking some time then we go and click on this create database and I click on this create database and then like uh, it asks you to like whether you want to create a database like a standard create where you have to provide all the configuration settings and everything and then the easy create where they provide like a lot of information is like uh, already provided to you so we'll go with the standard create if you want to easy create a lot of things will, will be autofill so we'll go standard create and then the next is we need to choose the database engine as we talk about like we have six database engines and Aurora, which is a property of AWS, is uh, it's compatible with only two, MySQL and Postgres. So, for example, we select MySQL. The next thing is uh, the what version of MySQL you want. You can pick whatever is compatible. So, it's by default it is the latest one, but depending on your requirement, you can select your uh, enable version. The next thing is the template. So, this is very important. Like a uh, like if you doing like they, they give you this if it is production you select from here if it is like for dev testing this is there and if it's free tier you can select this like if you're doing a demo or uh, even like you learning this this is like free tier is a good option to pick and after that like so the difference you see if you select this the the multi availability zones options get disabled because it's a free tier they they know it's not a critical application this is for something uh it, it's it, like even if it fails it's not that critical so if you do production like if we let's I'm show you if you select productions like these options still there like single database instance multi ag database instance and there is another like multi ag db cluster which is basically in this case like you will have a, a, like a two standby uh, database instances while uh, in this one you will have only one so that's the difference and we'll go and select free tier one more time this thing automatically grayed out the next thing is like uh, then we configure our database instance this includes the size storage network options and also we can specify the database name username and password so here you can see this is the identifier the database name then the admin the password you want to like I'm keeping everything as, as it is and password we can select like you can type the password you want and then confirm the password then the instance class as I mentioned initially like in the in the in the beginning of this video like it's the size so you can have different size like here like uh, you can select from this drop down i know like because we selected a uh, free tier so we're not seeing all the options like it's showing us that like the basic uh sizes like but uh depending on your use case like if it is production then then you can choose the size accordingly and after that like other things like storage and all those things i'm keeping everything by default and now uh, the other thing is like uh, the next thing you can uh, like a uh, pick is connectivity when you want to connect your database to e ec2 here we will stick to the by default but if you want to connect we can do that too and this is the thing which i was talking about the virtual private cloud so here i'm picking the default one but you if you want like you can create your own private cloud and from there you can define like your subnets and all those security settings security groups and a lot of things there so I'll keep everything as it is. If you want your public access, do it yes, or otherwise, like you have to set uh, the IPs 
whoever you want to give access to it. Uh, rest of them I'll keeping exactly the same. I'm not changing anything. And if you want, like there are a few other settings which we can enable, but like for example, of monitoring and all that, if you want, you can do it, but this is the default one. So we're not doing anything. And in the end, just click on create database. If you miss something, okay. So for in this case, like it says, password is wrong. Okay, let me go on again, create. Okay, let me reset both. Okay, so they have some constraint. I didn't, I didn't see this and I had a special character. So, okay, let me do this. So that's pretty much like um, any other password constraints, like where they have certain restrictions which we need to follow or certain rules. Then click on create database. And after this, like it will create a database. It will take uh, some time. Uh, we don't need any add-ons to this database. We'll keep it this. Like it, this will take some time. You can select this because still creating it. But you will find like all the end URL port number and all those kind of information here. And then if you are part of the VPC, you should be able to connect to this using any SQL client because there is no uh, like query editor available for uh, MySQL, uh, Postgres and like anything other than Aurora, like you can't use the this query editor. This is only available for Aurora. Rest of them you can use when you are like, a, when the database is created, you will have your endpoint and port and pretty much like the uh, the way we have our today's connection where we enter the URL, host name and the port and after that we connect it. But the condition here is like, you need to be part of these VPC groups. Like, uh, like currently, if you use the default one, you won't be able to do it. Uh, and as I mentioned, VPC is something which is out of scope of this video, but uh, it's good to know. If you're not able to connect so then definitely either you're not part of the vpc security groups or your uh, or your ip address is not allowed uh, that's all for this video stay tuned for upcoming videos thank you